When it comes to recording hardware synths in Ableton Live, most people get it wrong. And that means a bunch of latency and all kinds of sync issues, which can be a real headache. But don't worry, I'm here to help. In this video, I'll show you how to sort it all out using one Ableton stock plugin. First, let's look at how we get your hardware synth patched into Ableton Live. So on the table here, I have my synth, which is Dave Smith Tetra 4. I have my audio interface, which is the RME Fireface UCX2. We then need to send audio out of our hardware synth to the audio interface. You will need to switch your input to line input as synthesizers send out line level volume. The next thing you will need to set up is how Ableton Live is going to send MIDI to your synth. Most modern synthesizers these days have USB. However, if you're running an older synth and it doesn't have USB, you will need to use one of these, which is MIDI DIN. Now, most synthesizers have the option to have USB or MIDI DIN, which is this MIDI in and out section here. If you're at home recording directly into your computer, USB is totally fine. If you're using this on stage, better to connect it over MIDI DIN. To connect your synth to your computer over MIDI DIN, you will need a MIDI interface, which just so happens on most audio interfaces, you have a MIDI DIN connection on the back, which looks like that. You will need to go from the MIDI out, where you would like to send the MIDI, to the MIDI in on your synth. There we go. And that is all now set up, ready to receive MIDI. So in live, go up to your settings. You can use the shortcut command comma or control comma on Windows. We're gonna to go to audio and make sure you have your audio interface selected. Then configure your inputs. Make sure that you have the input that you plugged your synthesizer into selected. And I've just named it Tetra, so it's easy to see. Now that's set up, we need to set up our MIDI IO. So go to the link tempo MIDI tab, and then we're gonna look at this thing down here. Now, if you've connected your synth via USB, it will show up here, the name of the synth. And you will need to select on the input track and remote, and on the output track and remote. If you are looking to sync any arpeggiators or sequences, you will need to select sync on the output. So that's our audio and MIDI preferences set up. Now let's jump into live and look at how we can send that MIDI out to a synth. So I have a MIDI track here with a clip with some chords and melody in it. I'm then gonna go down to MIDI two and choose where I would like to send it. Then you need to choose the MIDI channel. Now this all depends on your synth. Usually by default, they are set to MIDI channel one, but I have changed my one to MIDI channel four. Can you guess why? <laughs> okay. So it's important if you're using a lot of synths to set them to different MIDI channels. And that will ensure you don't get any MIDI being sent to the wrong synthesizer. So now that's set up, if I press play on my clip, you should see this is sending MIDI out. Now, this is where most people go wrong. They will get an audio track, choose the audio in, select the monitor to auto, arm the track, and then we have a synth. Perfect, right? Not quite. Let's record it in and see the problem. So if we look at this note here, that should be coming on the beat, but we have a delay of eight milliseconds. So there's a couple of things we can do to combat that latency. First off, we're gonna get rid of the audio track. We're gonna do it all on the MIDI track. We're gonna go down to here to this little menu. We're gonna make sure we have track options turned on and we're gonna turn off keep latency. Now you can adjust the latency on the track here, but there's an easier and better way. If we go into a browser, instruments, and we're gonna choose external instrument, drag it onto our track here. This device then can work out the latency and compensate for it, meaning it's tighter and more in time. So check this out. If I go and do my MIDI out, so I choose the Tetra channel four input Tetra. Now, how I would record the audio to check that, one way of doing it is if I right click, go bounce to new track, skip that. Then if I go into the audio track here, zoom in, look how much closer that is. If I highlight that, that's four milliseconds out, but it's close, but no cigar. Why is that? 
That's all to do with your synthesizer. Inside this synth, it receives the MIDI, sends out the audio, but there is an internal process that goes on that is different for every synth, and that is the hardware latency. Using the external instrument here, we have the ability to say to live how much latency is in the hardware. And by looking at that, you see there I highlighted it, put my mouse over it and down in the bottom corner here, it says four. I can go into the external instrument and type four. So let's type four in there and then do the same process again. And we go bounce to new track. Boom, that is pretty much on the money. Essentially that is it. Our synth is bang on in time. But how do you record it? The most obvious way to do it is to create a new audio track. Choose our audio source from, and we put it as the external instrument. We can do this pre or post effects. I'm going to do it post effects on the track, press play on the clip and record it in. Then if you double click on the clip, you can zoom in and check the latency is still not there. Fantastic. Hey, now another neat thing is you can also record in any dials you change here on the synth. So if I go into my clip here, it's going to make this a little bit bigger. I have this as a loop. To get this over time, you would need to extend the length of the loop. So I'm just going to go up here and press duplicate a bunch of times. And then I'm going to use the session record here. Then I'm going to go to the top of my track here and receive MIDI from DSI Tetra channel four. Now, if you were using MIDI DIN, you would also have to connect the MIDI out to the MIDI in on your audio interface or your MIDI interface. As we're just using USB, it sends both MIDI out and in. Now that's going to be receiving MIDI, which is fantastic. If I go to session record now, if I then press play and engage session record, turn some of these dials. It is then recording that as automation inside the clip. I go to my envelopes, then you can go to MIDI control and then you'll be able to see it in this list here. It might be different depending on what synth you've got, but you should see a little dot next to it. There you go. There's the stuff and it's been recorded. Now, if you do it this way, there's another super simple way of recording it. It's once you're happy with that, you can simply do what we were doing before and go bounce in place or bounce to new track. If we do bounce to new track, it's just like before, but this time it will record all those automation changes. And there we go. It has bounced the audio from that external instrument and you still have the clip there in the background, which you can unmute by pressing zero. Good stuff. If you are still experiencing some latency issues in live, what we can do is we can go to options here and we need to make sure we have reduced latency when monitoring turned on. That stops live from overcompensating and keeps your timing a lot tighter. Now, if you've done all that and you still are experiencing some latency issues, that will be because you're monitoring with inside Ableton Live. We are using this monitoring option here as auto or in, and that's where you're hearing it go through Ableton Live. If you do not need any processing in Ableton Live, you can set this to off. We can then go to our control software here and we can turn up the direct in on our audio interface. And that means we're going to hear it before it gets to Ableton Live. So before we record it in, we just go to the top of our track, go to our external instrument, and we're going to just turn off the audio in to no input. And then on the latency, we're just going to put this back to zero as we might not need to compensate for it anymore. So let's go in and record that. I mean, that's pretty much bang on the money. So we go, that's another good way of reducing the latency. Now that you've got your hardware synth set up inside Ableton Live latency free, you might be thinking about getting your modular synth into Ableton Live, but modular synths have an even bigger latency problem. But don't worry, I found a fix for it. It took me ages and you can see how to do it in this video here. Bye for now.